What the, how do you, how do you even make something like that? Welcome to uh, Show and Tell. This is a series that Atlas Obscura started because of this strange moment we find ourselves in, where we are all stuck at home with nowhere to go, and we figured what better time to reach out to all the incredible people we know who have amazing, interesting stuff and ask them to show it to us since they're literally trapped with it right now. And today we're gonna talk with one of our longtime collaborators, uh, artist, sculptor, skeletal articulator, television host, uh, Ryan Matthew Cohen. Did I, did I get that right, Ryan? Did I list the, I'm probably missing something. You forgot obsessive collector and curator. <laughs> Right, right. Obsessive collector, collector is probably the, the first in the bulleted list of, of things. Um, yeah, I've been an antiques collector since I was a little boy, and it sort of blossomed into the pseudo-historian uh, collection that I have now. What is your specialty in the world of collection? Well, outside of collecting, I sort of dabble in osteology. I wouldn't call myself an osteologist per se. Uh, but in dealing with medical specimens for the amount of time that I have, I've gotten good at it you know, restoring these types of things and working on them and then creating pieces such as this one here. Um, this is a piece that I created for doctors to study the density of bone inside of the skull. Um, so you can see it's cut into many different segments. And when, when you say you created that, what do you mean? So it's a 19th century medical real human skull that I've sectioned into 15 parts. So it's a very lengthy process. And one that requires a lot of patience because if you have something too thin, then the pieces are not going to fit closely together. You have to be in a very small and potentially terrifying group of people who understand the intricacies of what it takes to saw through a human skull. That is, that is a, a subset of knowledge that uh, not a ton of people possess. So you were going to show me something and I was going to do my best to take a guess at what this object was. Okay. You have something to try and stop yeah, me? With? I do have a rather obscure item that I think if you just took a look or took took a glance at it, it might stump you. But I'll show you this first. Is it a giant? Looks like an like maybe like an organ, like a giant, like some kind of part of an eye, like some enlarged uh, body part, maybe. Kind of. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I'll take a guess. I'm gonna say it is a. What is that? Some like a spleen, it's like a model of a spleen. I don't know what a spleen looks like. So it's not a spleen, okay. I'll give you that so far, but I will reveal another uh, detail of this and it might make you figure out what it is. What's it made out of? Oh. Oh, wow, okay, so that is a tiny, that's like a little fetus in there. Indeed. Okay, all right, and you said it, what did you say it was made out of? Paper mache. Okay, I know, I know what this is. It is a, it is a obstetric model, uh, obviously, of of a of a womb with a fetus in it. And if it's made of paper mache, I'm almost positive it was made by an artist named uh, Azu. I think Azu, Azu. I don't know. I can't remember how to pronounce it. A Z. You say Azu. I say Azu. Um, <laughs> we bought Azu. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, that's what I've always called it. But you are correct. It's a three-month womb. So this was made by Louis Jerome Ozu in the 19th century. This particular piece was part of a larger set that would show the different developmental stages of the fetus. Um, so this is just one part of it. But it's a little hard to see, but I'll bring it closer to the camera. You can see that everything is pretty well represented. The little yeah. fetus is made out of paper mache. Every little like nerve vein is represented in there in different colors. And then it's hand painted and numbered. Um, and then it has this little viewing window that's a bit cloudy and a little hard to see. Oh, I, that, I totally didn't read that as a as like translucent that you could look in there. Is, yeah, it's with a lot of his pieces, um, they were used to kind of study every aspect of whatever you were looking at. So in this instance, you were looking at a womb and he wanted to have a form of viewing window. Yeah, what, is an, what is another thing in your collection that you, that you particularly prize? This is, this is one of my favorite pieces. Pe like people ask me constantly, what is like your favorite piece in your collection? I would say that this is definitely one of them. This was made by an anatomist in the 19th century uh, by the name of Tremond. 
And for collectors of medical preparations, especially those from the 19th century, this is sort of the cream of the crop. This is what like every collector admires when you go to medical museums in Paris, you'll usually see examples of these. This is a human skull that has been adorned with wax, nerves, veins, and arteries, as well as a wax eyeball with a glass uh, iris or pupil. And wow. so what's cool about this one is that it opens up so that you can look at the interior as well as the exterior. And so th there is a certain level of detail on the inside, but if you look closely, I'll try to bring this closer to the camera. Yeah. It's very, very intricate. You can see every nerve, vein, and artery. That's cool. That's it. Those, so those are wax, all the veins and arteries are wax? Or yes, like yes, yep. And it's, then it's mounted on a stand. Do you think of yourself as a, as a macabre person or a gothic um, kind of person? Um, no, I mean, maybe I'm a little gothic in like my presentation or my, my look, but no, not really. Um, I'm just fascinated with this stuff. I mean, much like a historian is fascinated with some element of history, I find medical preparations from the past very, very interesting, not only for their history, but also like for my own art and, and things that inspire me. These are amazing objects. You're showing me these are these are so such crazy things. I mean, they're really like completely arresting. You know, are you happy to be trapped with all your stuff, or is it oppressive to be trapped with all your stuff? Oh no, I love it. Yeah, I love it. And we just moved recently, so um, I went from having one floor to three, so now I can work down in the basement, bring the stuff that I'm working on up into the collection, and then I'm working on a skull room right now. But I haven't quite finished it. <laughs> what, what what is a skull room? What does that mean when you're done with that? I mean, it's just that. It's like most of my skulls in my collection and some of my wax collection. Sort of like the oddities room, even though my entire house <laughs> you look around, it's a giant oddities room. Um, yeah. we're sitting in my parlor right now. So this is just like a couple of the things that I have here, but the house is pretty full. Cool. That's awesome. Um, all right, yeah, next object. I think you might have seen this because I know you've been over to the house before. I've seen this. This is one of the things that blew my mind. It's actually, it's funny because on here, it's hard to tell scale, but yeah. that thing is huge. That thing is, or it's, yeah, it's definitely bigger than you are. So I'm sitting next to it and this is literally how big it is. It, right. I would say it's at least twice the size of a normal human head. And the reason why it's so large is because it would have been used in anatomical theater. And so in order for the entire amphitheater to, to see this piece, they made them much larger. In fact, Ozu would create gigantic eyes and gigantic ears. And so if you're studying the ear, everybody has to learn, you know, every aspect of the ear as part of the curriculum. They would make these oversized models and never quite seen anything like this. I love the oversized anatomical models, but this one is, is really different. Usually it's really specific. It is like a big brain, a big ear, a kind of some detail piece. This is a whole yeah. other level. So this is this would be known as an écorché. Um, okay. This was used to demonstrate the relationship between bone, organ, and the skeletal system, or even the muscular system. Um, so if you look at this one again, it's a little hard to see, but you can see you know you have the veins, the muscle, and then in here you have many of the organs covered in bone. And this is entirely made of wax. I think the only thing on this that's another material is the base, which is made of bone. And once again, the pupil is made out of uh, glass. Um, everything's numbered. So you would, you know, as part of your study, would learn every part of, you know, what you were looking at once again. Where did, where did this one come from, this incredibly unique giant wax figure? This uh, came from Germany. So about, God, I don't even know how many years it is now, three or four years ago. I purchased an entire museum from Munich. So you got the whole museum? I bought the entire museum and later on sold it to Alamo Draft House and then partnered with them to create what's now House of Wax. You know, at the beginning part of my career, any museum that was willing to maybe part with some of their items that, whether they be wax or skull, um, I would try to save them and kind of keep them in my own museum. Yeah, so you see part of your, your mission as a kind of preservation mission of these objects that once, once museums deaccession them, people don't realize this, but like natural history museums will take a bunch of stuff and basically just send it to the garbage because like they run out of space and they decide things are not, no longer important. And like when whole medical museums close, a lot of times those specimens don't necessarily end up somewhere good, you know? And so that's an interesting part of it. Yeah, yeah. They, get, they get incinerated and that's very, very common. Uh, you know, 
schools, universities, museums, they just don't have the space. And there's only so much that at this point we can learn from early medical preparations. You know, there's so much technology now where you can do pretty much anything. You can scan a human. You don't really need a 19th century wax version to do that. Now, are they fascinating? Absolutely. Do they tell a part of our medical history? Yes. And I think that's the appeal to many people. And so, you know, that's why I keep X amount of pieces in my collection now. The rest are in museums. I have one last thing, and then we can we can wrap this up. I ha I need your advice on something. Sure. Uh, it's a project I've been meaning to do for a million years. So one second. <laughs> I think I know what it is. You do know what it is. I have been talking about this for we. You know. So okay. Backstory. This is a moose skull. Here yeah. is a moose vertebrae. These, along with all the other bones that make up a whole moose, are, have been in my basement in various places. They were in Brooklyn, now they're here, they were in the office for a while. We had this for like eight years, but I still don't, I need help. I don't know how to make this thing into an actual thing. You just, you do it in different sections. You do the yeah. neck first, and then you do the body, and then you do something to make it be able to come off of the base. Because uh, that thing's big. The bones all together weigh like, 100 pounds so i need to be able to like hold it up somehow yeah I, we have to collaborate in the future to get that thing together i mean it's a it's a pretty incredible object <laughs> the scale of it is like wild yeah it looks like it has all of its teeth and where so there's no horns that go to that we, we have no antlers i think the hunter kept the antlers because that's like the you know whatever like sure uh but uh otherwise we've got it all we've got all the little biddly you know fiddly bits like uh, so now also like it's all mixed up. So I got to, the first step is like figuring out what even anything is. And in fact, the one thing I do have that's helpful is this, the moose manual. <laughs> You've got some stuff running. You're doing some classes. You want to talk about that? Sure. So um, I have been doing cat skeleton articulation classes. Uh, this is a course where you learn how to take a disarticulated cat skeleton and give it new life. And every student leaves with uh, a full skeleton with a base on a little stand. And I was doing this live, but now I'm doing them virtually. And they've been going great. Uh, I just did a couple of my first ones. Um, they're located on my website. They're currently sold out for the next week, but then I'll be adding some more when I catch up. And just to be clear, you send people the skeleton. They are not responsible for acquiring a cat skeleton, right? <laughs> Yeah, I send a, um, a medically cleaned, perfectly, uh, you know, fully functional cat skeleton. They're all humanely sourced, ethically sourced, and it shows up at your doorstep. And then through Zoom, I explain the process of putting it together, and then I help you complete the piece. Cool. Well, you'll, you'll be teaching me a one-on-one -on -one moose articulation skeleton. Up yeah, and then up. as we had to postpone Los Angeles, uh, that... Our oddities flea markets are still going to be happening. They're just all kind of postponed for the time being until further notice. But we will, um, on our website, be announcing when we've rescheduled, if we had to reschedule. Um, but so far, we still have some good ones in the books. We have Chicago, San Francisco, LA, New York. Cool. Uh, well, always a pleasure. Good to talk to you. You too. Uh, all right. I will see you soon. Yeah, see you. Everybody stay safe and uh, stay indoors until... You know, we can get up. Good advice. Good parting words. Thank you so much for watching the show, part of our Wonder From Home project. And let us know who you think we should talk to next. If you think that's you, please let us know in the comments and tell us uh, the kinds of things you want to share and show and tell about. And finally, of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.